in today's video we will look at Judith Wright's poem Clock and Heart. In this poem we can find how Judith Wright connects time, heart and her poetry. The first line of the poem starts like this. The trap of time surprised my heart. This poem is a part of your major paper, World Literature, under Unit 1, Poetry. This is a work of Judith Wright, Half a Lifetime, and you can see Judith Wright to your right. She is an Australian poet, critic, and short story writer. She has written poems that talks about nationhood and also voiced for social costs. She is voiced for Aborigines, that is the native inhabitants of Australia, and her poems also show ecological concerns. She is born in 1915 and died at the age of 85. These are some of her works, collected poems, a human pattern, selected poems, and a collection of essays born of the conquerors. This poem, Clock and Heart, was first published in the London Magazine in the year 1964. We will now see the other books in which this particular poem, Clock and Heart, was published. The other half poems, Judith Wright in 1966, Sadali, 1967, Judith Wright Collected Poems 1942 to 1970, published in 1971, uh, The Penguin Book of Australian Verse, published in 1972, An Anthology of Commonwealth Poetry, published in 1990, and her Collected Poems 1942 to 1985, published in 1994, and this present edi uh, present uh, poem which I've used in this presentation is taken from Judith Wright Collected Poems 2016 edition. This is a poem, Clock and Heart. The trap of time surprised my heart. Its hidden teeth of circumstance that draw the child into the clock upon the cogs of tick and tock. No logic, artifice, nor chance could silence my protesting heart. The first line speaks of time as a trap and this trap has surprised the poet's heart. Its hidden teeth, its hidden teeth is the time's hidden teeth of circumstance that draw the child into the clock. So we can find how the child matures into an, um, an adult over time. So Drawing child into the clock refers to how time swiftly moves and a child becomes an adult. So the development or the growth of a child into a mature adult happens swiftly over time. The draw the child into the clock upon the cogs of tick and tock. So when we look at the first line, the first line speaks of time and heart. So the heart, the beating of the heart, the lapped up sound, that can be connected with how the cogs, the parts in the clock that makes the clock move, that makes the clock work. Actually, it, it is the one that also produces or that also helps in producing that tick tock sound. So the tick-tock can be compared to the beating of the heart. So here we can see the connection between the clock, which is the time, and the heart, which is a part of emotion. So here the surprise element of the heart refers to the feeling of the poet, and the time refers to the, uh, the uh, duration or the uh, the power of time over any of our days or over any of our lives. No logic, 
artifice, not chance could silence my protesting heart. So the poet is not happy with the time. The time has moved swiftly. So the poet is trying to find some meaning for it. But there is no logic, no artifice, not even a small trick or not chance. No? Could silence, could silences, could quieten her protesting heart. So why is her heart protesting? Protesting is going against. So the heart of the poet is going against the trap of time. So the poet is not happy with the time moving swiftly. Then poetry's electing shade enclosed me with its darkening ray. Then the word then will signify that something nice is happening now. So earlier she is not happy with time. We may think, okay, so she has come out of it. But again, there is a problem here. Enclosed me with its darkening ray. Now look at the word darkening here. A ray, we normally connect it with light, which will be bright. But here it is darkening and there is an enclosure also. Enclosed me. So she is covered completely by this poetry. And this is an electing shade. She has opted for it. This is the first choice that she has. So uh, from this trap of time, she uh, is now taking shelter under poetry. But this uh, first option seems to be enclosing her. Left me no face to recognize, no eyes to meet my searching eyes. So the poetry that she has chosen doesn't have or doesn't give any connection to the outer world. She does not find a face which she could recognize, nor does she see any eyes you know, that could meet her searching eyes. The solitude of poetry locked me within its second shade. So we could find the word enclosed in the beginning of this stanza and the last line of this stanza locked me. So she is caged in this poetry and she is caged alone, not with people. So this is what the solitude of poetry signifies. And we can also find there is a difference in the first line. It is the electing shade. She has opted for it. That is the first choice. Now it becomes the second shade. So the word second can also be associated with time because we know the R and the second, uh, second hand. No, We uh, indicate minutes, seconds, with time so here also we find how there is a shift in the shade so from the electing shade the first choice you now the shade the poetry has become her second shade to light that shade and set me free no flame had power but human love against my will i caught and burned but then the key of time was turned the dark ray blazed and from above lit the R that set me free. So to light that shade, so now it has become the second shade which is poetry. So this is darkening, this is enclosing her, this is caging her. So that dark shade has to be lightened, has to be bright. Now we find light you know, signifying freedom or signifying knowledge. So here she says this particular thing is lit by uh, or this is uh, lit by lit by something uh, like uh, no, human love. So there is no other flame which is which has that power, but it, only human love has the power to lit to uh, to light this shade, and that has happened against her will. So she was feeling comfortable in the darkening ray. So now it is against her will that she is caught in this human love. She is burned and then the key of time was turned. So we can find the time also cooperating with her and giving her the nice uh, opportunity to use it. Therefore, the dark ray is blazing. Blazing is it is getting brighter and from above. So this is from the divine source, from God. So it lit the R that set me free. So the R, no, R also indicates time. So here it lit the R is that moment no, of uh, darkness was uh, 
lighted or we could say she was in you know caged enclosed and locked that is set free by human love set free at last in human time that long rejected tyranny i found in ordinary love the solitudes of poetry so she is free at last in human time within that human time within the period that long rejected tyranny i found in ordinary love so she feels that so far uh, no the things were ruling her uh, things that were governing her like the time like the shade of poetry all that is now rejected she has found ordinary love and now in that ordinary love she finds the solitude of poetry so the key ideas in all her poems are physical and ecological landscape and there is also human and emotional landscape in this particular poem we can concentrate on the human and the emotional landscape we could see how her feelings her uh, uh, presence as a human being is uh, brightened up or lightened up so we can find it talks about uh, the stages of being a poet so how over time she develops into a poet and after being a poet she had been writing but the uh, cause for her writing uh, in fact blazes up or blazes all together like how the human love converts her um enclosed uh, uh, the place into uh, something free how it liberates her so similarly here we can find the change of her uh, uh, attitude towards people so uh, this poem speaks of time poetry and emotions most of her poems map the place language cultures and also the self talking about the self we will uh, proceed further to know about uh, the uh, uh, the uh, self actualization aspect but that would be uh, according to the psychological needs so that can be done later a small activity for you you have to read this poem slowly and keep track of the words just uh, don't think that this is an activity to figure out what are the difficult words no I'm not asking for words that are difficult for you. I'm asking you to note down certain words that would interest you, that you feel are, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, good in this particular poem, or that are best suited for this poem. So uh, you have to make a list of uh, nearly twenty plus or twenty-five plus uh, words. please make a note of all the words that you come across they can be familiar they can be unfamiliar but still please make a note of it let us read the poem clock and heart the trap of time surprised my heart its hidden teeth of circumstance the draw the child into the clock upon the cogs of tick and tock no logic artifice not chance could silence my protesting heart then poetry's electing shade enclose me with its darkening ray left me no face to recognize no eyes to meet my searching eyes the solitude of poetry locked me within its second shade to light that shade and set me free no flame had power but human love against my will i caught in burn but then the key of time was turned the dark ray blazed and from above it lit the hour that set me free set free at last in human time that long rejected tyranny i found in ordinary love the solitudes of poetry just take a minute you can even pause the video and write down the words and then come back again and play it so this is a small activity so you would have found words like this which are nouns or verbs so all might have 
touched you somewhere, interested you. Some of it may be familiar, some may be unfamiliar, but you would have taken a note of it. If you are unfamiliar, please go to the dictionary and find out the meaning of the word. Yes, so you can think of those words in time of in in matters of you no know, certain uh, division or certain uh, category. So here I am uh, sorting out certain words that come under time, that are human parts, that are non-human, some uh, you know, pertaining to the sense organs like eyes, nose, uh, tongue, then the skin. Uh, touching, so burning, catching, or caught. Now all these are the auditory, TikTok, you know, the auditory, something to do with your ear, so sense perceptions. And then I'm looking at certain words that uh, may give meaning or that may be opposite to each other. So uh, I, I was trying to find certain related words. So we can understand the choice of words used by the poet and within this uh, small framework of words, we could find how the poet is trying to convey different meanings. Yes, so to sum up, I told you earlier that I will be talking about self-actualization. So this is self-fulfillment needs. This is according to the needs hierarchy. So I'm just going to sum up with this. Australian poet Judith Wright is an environmentalist and social activist. So this is a recap of what you saw in the first parts of this uh, session. Her poem, short stories and essays map the language, culture, place and the self. The poet Judith Wright speaks about the praise of time and the trap of time. Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is the diagram that shows the hierarchy, the order of needs here. Uh, she says, uh, Judith Wright says that she has reached this self-actualization by choosing ordinary human love. And she is liberated by this human love and the call has come from above. So you can see this is your food and clothing keep you warm. This is the shelter, the home that we have. So these two form the basic needs. Then we find belongingness and love needs are like, you know, you have your sister, brother, you know, the, the uh, relations, you know, or you may have friends. So that is belongingness. And then you have the esteem needs, which is you know, the status. You want to be on top. You want to be uh, the superior, uh, in the superior position. You want to be always different from others, noticed as a unique person. So those esteem needs, you know, that is the feeling of prestige and accomplishment. And finally, it is the self-fulfillment needs uh, wherein uh, one person achieves their potential, including creative activities. Here we talk about poetry. So one uh, achieves uh, their greatness, their fulfillment at this stage, and this is self-actualization. So this is what uh, we find in uh, Judith Wright's uh, poem. So with that, uh, I would sum up the poem, Clock and Heart.